I'm Brian Custer. I'm the host of Showtime Championship Boxing. This is the virtual press conference for Fundora versus Mendoza. Um, Saturday, April 8th, Showtime Championship Boxing. We are back at Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California, or as we like to call it, uh, the Punch Bowl. Uh, we got a triple header uh, of fights coming your way on Showtime Championship Boxing, 10 p.m. Eastern. That is 7 o'clock Pacific time. And it's all presented by Premier Boxing Champions, by the way. Uh, these fights are going to be promoted by TGB Promotions, Samson Boxing. Uh, the tickets can be purchased at AXS.com. Again, AXS.com. The main event of that night is a barn burner at 154 pounds. It features... The unbeaten WBC interim champ, Sebastian, the towering inferno, Fundora. He's taken on the hard hitting Brian Mendoza. Listen, last time we saw uh, Fundora, that was last October, where he took on Carlos Ocampo, dominated him for 12 <laughs> rounds, uh, got the unanimous decision. And it was right there at Dignity Health Sports Park, by the way. Uh, and then the last time we saw Brian Mendoza, who can forget that? That was last November. He took on the former unified champion at the time, Jason Rosario. Mendoza took the fight, folks. Let's not forget on 10 days notice. 10 days notice, and he knocked Rosario down twice in that fight, in especially in the fifth round. And basically the second time, that was it. It was a wrap. And he not only knocked out uh, Rosario, but Rosario, you might remember, retired uh, after that fight. That's how devastating that knockout was to him and to his career. He's now coming off a of two straight, talking about Mendoza, two straight knockout wins. This is going to be something. It is the main event. I got both of the fighters here. We're going to talk about uh, their upcoming main event. Well, now you members of the media to ask some questions to as well to these fighters. Make sure you hit the raise your hand icon there at the bottom of your Zoom. And then members of Showtime Sports will allow you to ask questions uh, to these guys. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's start with the towering inferno himself, Sebastian Fundora. He's unbeaten. Sebastian, I guess, first of all, give members of the media just an update on how camp is going and what should we expect when you get into the ring with Brian Mendoza? Well, uh, camp's been good, you know, everything's been good for me. Uh, we've been just uh, been training hard, getting ready for another fight, another exciting fight here in Carson. So uh, um, just expect fireworks, you know. I'm going to bring my best. I hope he brings his best. And it, again, just expect fireworks. Love it. Uh, Brian Mendoza, same thing to you. For members of the media who are watching this, give us some insight on how camp has been going, how you've been training for a guy who's six, 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 seven, and what should we expect when you get in the ring with the towering Inferno? Um, another explosive performance, you know, like last time, this has been a tremendous camp. Uh, I've been killing myself day in, day out, suffering every single day, making sure, you know, uh, every, leave no stone unturned. And we're just, we're just ready to go. I wish it was tomorrow. Love it. All right, guys, let's talk about this fight a little bit. Sebastian, I got to go to you because look, Mendoza, we, we know this guy can throw. He's now coming off two straight knockout wins. Is that something that concerns you? Is this a fight where you say, hey, look, I'm not trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy? No, that's not, uh, that's never the case for me. Uh, this last guy we fought, Ocampo was a hitter, apparently. Lubin was a hitter. All these guys have been strong guys, you know. Uh, and those is another strong fighter that we're going to fight. And we're going to um, just go for the win like always. Uh, B, listen, this, this is a guy who, again, he's so tall at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and you would think on the outside that this guy would use his range and, and, and reach, but you know what? He loves to battle it out with guys, and it's an exciting fight. Is that the type of fight you're expecting out of Sebastian Fundora? Um, yeah, of course, but like I said, you know, um, I've been suffering in camp, just sacrificing everything to be ready for whatever happened, you know, if he tries to use his range and, and all that, or if he tries to bang, you know, like usual, uh, we're ready really for anything. But I just, you know, been preparing, you know, brought in sparring partners. I've even been in there with cruiserweight sparring and stuff, um, literally getting ready for anything. 
So it's, 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 it's really that just truly ready for anything. Not just that cliche, but just ready for whatever. I think I read something where you told one member of the media, you're looking to, you know, not only shock people again, um, with this victory over, you say over Fondor, talk to me about that. You know, what, what do, do you think people didn't, um, give you enough respect for that win that you got over Rosario? Um, it wasn't so much about the respect. It was just before the fact, you know, before I said, I wanted to add a former unified world champion to my resume and people, you know, scoffed and laughed. And I'm like, all right, keep laughing. Um, and it's more about that. It's just, you don't, you don't have to believe me. I'm going to show the, uh, just with my actions. And that's what, you know, what I want to do. I want to go out there and prove that I'm one of the best and especially in this division. And that's the, that's the goal. So it's more, it's more about getting, uh, you know, just proving to people because like, all right, you don't have to just believe my words, but I want to go in there and prove that, prove what I say that I'm going to shock the world and ups- pull off another big upset. What did, what did that win over Rosario do for you and your confidence? Um, the confidence was there just, uh, through, through the work ethic, you know, so I finally have my team, the right team behind me and everything. And cause I've always, you know, dedicated everything to this and the confidence was always there, but of course it does get to another level. And then, uh, you know, you just see, like, I went immediately from that to a, a title fight like this. So it just, it did everything. It was everything. Hmm. Sebastian, um, you know, listen, every fight is, is important. You, and, and I know that, but you know, we, we just had. Tim Zhu, Tony Harrison, and we saw what he did to Tony Harrison, and now he's gotten Charlo's attention, and Charlo and, and Zhu is like, okay, let's get it on this summer. So in light of that, I know you want your crack at that undisputed crown. How important then is this fight and making sure there is no slip-ups against somebody like Mendoza? This fight is as important as every other fight before. You know, um, Mendoza is a hard hitter. Like you guys said, he's a contender as well. Um, we're not looking lightly of him. You know, this is another tough fight, just like the last fight, just like the fight before. Uh, we have to go past Mendoza if we want to even think about fighting for that championship. Hmm. What did you see when you watch Mendoza and what he did to Rosario? What were your thoughts uh, about him as a fighter? Or did they change at all after seeing what he did to Rosario? No, um, I think he did a great performance. He did his thing. Uh, he looked very strong, but... It, it wasn't like uh, I didn't see anything different. Like where, whereas it's like we knew he was strong. That's that's I just put it like that. You know? yeah. Got it, got it. Um, B, uh, listen, Sebastian, six six. How does that height? How does that reach? Pose as and and is it uh, an issue at all? Come uh, April uh, in this fight, um, it's not uh, an issue. I've been I've been fighting and sparring tall guys, you know, my whole life. Um, especially not 54. I, I'm usually the shorter guy and it just, it really doesn't make a difference in sparring. I haven't had any kind of trouble and guys that try to keep me away or like guys that try to just overpower me because they're bigger. Like I said, you know, sparring cruiser weights and just bigger people in general. Um, I have too much experience and that's, what's going to be the difference here. And, and, and you know, Fundora is known for mixing it up. He, I mean, he know he loves to go toe to toe with guys. Is that an advantage for you in this fight? Um, I think so. But, you know, it's like I'm also just not going to go in there and try to play into his strengths and everything. And, um, you know, like I said, you know, like uh, it's about me proving what I, what I have to the world. You know, uh, the experience I have now is just unreal. You know, these last five years in Vegas have just been tremendous. And that's what I'm trying to show. You know, people think, OK, I'm just a hard hater. I'm this or that. And I'm going to keep showing the world otherwise. Sebastian, listen, I, I love Brian Mendoza. He's got like, I, I would like to call it that quiet confidence. And uh, you, you heard what he said. He's got the more experience. Uh, obviously, he believes he's got he's got some power, uh, but he's got the skills to take you out. Your your response. We'll see. April 8th, we'll see that. You know, I think a lot of people have been saying that about me, but I just gonna have to prove myself again, just like him. We both have a chip on the shoulder. You know, I want to become champion just like him. So we'll see what's, what happens April 8th. Yeah. And, and talk to me about that chip, because where, where, where does that come from for you? Because, you know, before it was like a nice story. Now you're kind of like one of the guys at 154. So where does that chip come from for you? You know, uh, I feel like we've been proving ourselves over and over and over again. You know, uh, we're just here waiting for our slot, for a shot to fight for the title. So. Uh, you know, people keep doubting us. They keep putting people in front of us and saying, this guy's going to beat you or this guy's going to knock you out. Or, this guy's going to uh, 
uh, um, um, expose you. We'll see. You know, we keep proving them wrong. And we're gonna prove them wrong again. That's what mm -hmm. we're doing. What, what is Brian Mendoza going to find out about Sebastian Fendor Fendora on uh, April eighth? For the next world champion, it's Super Walter. Mm. B, what is uh, Sebastian Fendora going to find out about you on April eighth? And I'm going to be and the new interim WBC Super Welterweight World Champion. And uh, that I'm a lot more than just a power puncher. Oh, I love that. I love it. Folks, I'm telling you, th this is the main event that's going down in Carson on April 8th. Two top guys at 154 pounds. I know there's a number of members of the media that have got some questions for you guys. So I want to let them uh, ask away. Uh, Mitch Abraham, he's with us from Showtime Sports. Uh, he's going to allow members of you, the media, ask your questions. Mitch, go ahead. Take it away. Thanks so much, Brian. I appreciate it. Uh, let's kick things off with Keith Eidick from Boxing Scene. Keith, go ahead. Thanks, Mitch. Uh, my first question is for Sebastian. Sebastian, how has it been for you to go through this process where you've had to wait for your title shot and remain active in, in several dangerous fights? I mean, how and why has that been important for you to remain active and stay sharp? You know, it, honestly, it hasn't been a problem. I feel like with, uh, you know, how they have their their system, I guess, like if you become a, a, a contender first, you get a fight for the belt first. So I think Tim, be, be, Tim became the w, WBO contender first. So that didn't really bother me. But, uh, you know, they, they made, they made uh, the WBC order to fight with us and and, and Harrison and that didn't happen. So now like everybody, I feel like everybody's trying to almost skip me and that's kind of bothering me, but you know what? We're still, my dad told me to re remain patient. You know, uh, we have a tough fight with Mendoza, but focus on that, of course, you know, and uh, we'll just keep, just keep moving forward as, as everything's going, I guess. Sebastian, have you been led to believe if you beat Brian and what's obviously a difficult fight, that you will get the winner of Charlo and Zoo in your next fight? You know, I, I like to believe that, but I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know. So we'll see what's next after Mendoza. But right now we have Mendoza still in front of us. So we're going to focus on that. Okay. Thank you, Sebastian. And I have a couple questions for Brian. Uh, Brian, congratulations on your most recent win. I know it's a career-changing victory for you. Um, thank, you thank you. You're welcome. How has it been for you? I, I know, like you said, you've you fought uh, heavier guys and everything in sparring, but how difficult uh, it's unusual to fight a, a six foot six uh, junior middleweight and a southpaw at that. How hard is it to get sparring to replicate what Sebastian does? Um, uh, you know, at first, but uh, I just I know, you know, I'm here in Vegas in the mecca of boxing, basically. It's um, so, you know, we know a lot of people that know a lot of people and stuff, and we've been able to bring in some sparring partners that we're able to emulate pretty well, uh, you know, even the, the size and punch selection and all that stuff. So it's uh, everything just fell into place beautifully. Okay. Brian, you've obviously been through a lot in your career. You had a couple of setbacks in, in recent years. Uh, what would it mean for you to beat Sebastian on April 8th and then find yourself in position to fight for all four titles at some point, potentially later this year? Uh, I mean, everything, you know, a win is everything. I'm trying to get to that next level. And I, like I said, you know, I finally feel like I have the right team behind me, the right, the, the level of experience and everything. And I feel like I'm in my prime. So I'm really entering my prime and it's just, it's just time. So that, uh, right now that this win is everything. You guys are obviously fighting at a venue, Brian, that's uh, has some history in terms of producing great fights. You guys styles seem that you could mesh together and make one of those epic fights. Can you speak to that fighting at, at Dignity Health Sports Park against a guy who obviously comes to fight every time out? Um, no, the fighting at, you know, the I, I still call it the OG stub hub. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, a, it's an honor there because that's a legendary place. Tons of wars have always happened there. And I want to cement my name as part of one of those wars and one of those big fights that went down there. You think this really could be a fight of the year candidate, though, just based on you two guys' styles? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't think anyone's really going to want to take a step back and just, you know, just just the style of period, like you said, or the way everything's going to line up. I feel like it's very possible. Great. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. OK, thanks, Keith. Appreciate it for that. Let's next go to Jim Conlon from RCB Radio Sport, Ireland. Jim, go ahead. 
Hi guys, uh, my first question there is for Brian. Uh, Brian, obviously you went in as an uh, underdog against uh, Rosario. Do you feel maybe that you're carrying momentum uh, off that sort of victory, that sort of surge in confidence that win gives you? And do you feel that maybe now that maybe the trick is out of the bag, that Pandora recognises you and recognises your ability now. So do you think you that you had that element of surprise against Rosario that you're probably not going to have against Pandora? Um, more or less, you know, because even then, uh, even after the fight, you know, people were saying, oh, I just caught him or this or that. But like I said, you know, people aren't seeing the, the experience, you know, the little subtle tricks and subtle stuff that came into that fight. Um, so no, and if you ask the sports books, I'm still a huge surprise underdog today. So, um, we're just going to have to see, you know, it's just another one. I'm proving myself, uh, each and every time out. And like I said, you know, the level I'm at right now is just, I, I feel like I can't be beat. And, uh, my next question is for Fundora. I suppose Fundora, everyone is talking about Jermel Charlo and the division and everyone, Charlo's probably looking down and saying he's the top dog and there's no one there to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Do you feel that maybe this Charlo has even not considered you? He's not even talking about your name. Do you feel that's a disrespect or do you feel that maybe this Charlo does mention you because he's a bit scared of you? You know, I, I, that's the business side of boxing. Uh, I don't really know too much about it. I just know that Tim Sue was up next. So um, that he had that hand issue. So he didn't fight Tim Sue. He had a... Um, rest I guess for a little bit but now they're back on so I think after that fight then we can actually start looking for that championship fight because you know uh, apparently that one's already set in stone so we'll see cheers guys best luck the weekend thank best you luck. all right thanks for that Jim uh let's now go to Lucas Cattell from Pro Boxing News Lucas go ahead hey my first question uh Fedora Pretty pretty tough opponent in Mendoza. Um, you're pretty close to getting a big opportunity. Can you talk through how this fight came about and kind of picking this opponent? Because I think a lot of people in your shoes wouldn't take this type of challenger at this moment. Um, we never pick anybody. I don't pick anybody. They just give me the assignment and I just do it. You know, Mendoza came off a big win with um banana, and you know, they said the um if they offered the fight to us and said, heck yeah, that's a good fight, you know, good fight for the fans, a good, good fight for us. So we just took it as soon as we heard the name. Okay. And for Brian, um, you've talked extensively about uh, Tony Brady helping with your career. Can you speak to some of the aspects of your relationship with Tony and how he's helped kind of with this resurgence in your career? Uh, he's been key. Uh, you know, absolutely. Like I've always had the, you know, like the fundamentals and all the boxing stuff, you know, in my head, but, now with Tony Brady behind me, I have the, the the strength, the conditioning, just all around, you know, the mental fortitude, honestly, to really uh, go out there and execute. And I feel like that's been a huge key factor and been the biggest key that I've added to to the team in the last few years. I feel like my final question, I feel like this division is fairly wide open. We got Charlo at the top. Tim Zhu had just an amazing performance. Are you guys trying to put on a performance? And this is fairly obvious, but are you in the back of your mind? Are you looking at Tim Zhu's recent performance and the praise he got to somewhat outdo that performance and make noise of your own to make a, a challenge at the top of the division? Absolutely. Um, 154, the thing I love about 154 is the titles were, play, were playing hot potato for years. And that's the thing at 154, everybody fights everybody. You know, you don't really get too much ducking and dodging. And that's why we're here, you know, making fights like this. Yeah, those are my questions. So, okay, thanks, Lucas. Appreciate it. Um, let's now go to James Bell from the Boxing Source. James Bell, go ahead. All right, thanks. Uh, just uh, one question here for Sebastian. Uh, you know, given that you, you know, have built up your undefeated record up to this point here, um, and you did have a a uh, tough fight with Erickson Lubin last year and also the fight with uh, Carlos Ocampo. Uh, what do you feel like you're uh, developing uh, over the course of your career the most uh, while you build this uh, unbeaten record and, you know, get to the top uh, in the 154-pound division? I feel like, uh, I don't know, just just building up to my – we had all this planned. I feel like me and my dad, we would always talk about when, when I first started professional – at 24, 25, we'll be fighting for a title around around there, contender. 
and uh, everything's working out well, you know. Uh, we have a title. It's not the full title yet, but we're around where we're where we where we think we are, and uh, you know, we just uh, pray we get that title fight soon. So that's about it. <laughs> All right, gotcha. Thanks. That's my questions. Thanks, James. Good stuff. Uh, let's now go to Willie Suarez from Boxeo Cubano. Willie, go ahead. How are you doing, guys? Uh, I have a question for Brian Mendoza. Actually, for both of them. Uh, I, I'm going to ask the question in Spanish to Brian Mendoza. Uh, Mendoza, uh, tú como boxeador cubano-americano que eres, ahí vimos un juego importante entre Cuba y Estados Unidos. ¿Cómo te sentiste? ¿A quién le ibas? Um, bueno, no, tú sabes, no quiere que, uh, que gane Cuba y tú sabes todas las cosas políticas y eso, pero anyway, uh, pero no se puede olvidar que nací aquí, soy americano también, eso fue algo difícil, estaba mezclado, tú sabes, entre los dos, pero, um, pero no, fue un tremendo juego. He asked la razón if, por uh, que... how I felt about the game yesterday, uh, the baseball game between America and Cuba. I said, uh, you know, of course, you know, I always want to root for Cuba, uh, but I can't forget I'm born and raised, I'm American, so it was, you know, real hard, and then Obviously, all the, the reason, politics that go behind it. <laughs> the reason I ask you that question, Mendoza, is because both of you are actually Cuban-Americans, in Fondora, Cuban-American, Mexican. Uh, so does that make you feel any different way? Because we see Mexicans fighting Mexicans, American fighting American, but when it comes to the Cubans, uh, for the most part, we don't see that too often. Does it make you both feel any, diff any kind of way? Um, it's, it's all the same to me, honestly. I just, uh, I just want the best fights. You know, I want, I want the, the world titles, you know, undisputed on all that. So as, as, you know, on my side, I just, I just want to fight the best and, you know, uh, they can be wherever they're, whether, wherever they come from. Same to you, Fondor. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. You know, he's one of the top fighters in 154. So, you know, if he's Cuban, so be it. It is what it is. Everybody, everybody's here to become a champion. You know, uh, it doesn't matter where they're from. So, uh, you know. Same thing. <laughs> Great. Thanks for that question, Willie. Appreciate it. Um, now let's go to uh, Dario Beste from La Casaca Boxing Club. Dario, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I have a question for, for each fighter. Uh, first for Fundora, uh, since Lubin, you have thrown uh, much more jabs. You have been more consistent with it. One, 125 against Lubin, 365 against Ocampo. Does this uh, mean that you are uh, uh, mastering your job or is it just a thing uh, about the opponent that you have that night? Uh, mastering your job, I feel like, I mean, I'm not gonna say I mastered it, but, but, but you know, I'm learning, I'm learning how to use a little bit more distance and stuff like that. Not that I've been learning, I'm just using it more, you know? I feel like I always can box, I always could box, but these fights call for different things, you know? Uh, Ocampo, I could box a little bit more than I could with Lubin. Lubin was trying to, be there in the chest you know you know something that i'm comfortable with but but uh that's what the fight called for so uh i'm just showing the boxing world what i can do in different situations um boxing using the jab i always been able to use that thank you very much uh, mendoza um does the underdog tag um fits you in this kind of fights this is the the second um fight that is really big and it's coming to you as a B-side. Does it fits you? Does it uh, uh, forces you to be a better fighter? Uh, absolutely. Um, I feel like, you know, either way, you know, I put on, want to put on my best performances. But, uh, yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying the, the whole B-side thing. It makes the victory that much sweeter. Thank you very much uh, to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Dario. I appreciate it. Um, now let's go to Antonio Baez from AB Boxing News. Antonio, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, question is for Brian. Uh, Brian, your last fight was um, with Banana, right? Was with Banana. What What did you learn from that fight, and what can you take from that fight to beat the champion, Thunder? Um, in that fight, I just gained a lot more experience. You know, that was a former unified world champion. Um, and he was actually on, on a comeback fight, on a comeback streak. I mean, uh, he had like two or three fights in the Dominican Republic. 
And a lot of people didn't even know that. So, you know, he felt like 160 was going to be his healthiest thing. You know, they made me go up to his weight and he was on that comeback streak feeling, feeling himself, you know, he thought 160, he was going to be a lot healthier and everything. And then, um, it was, it was just the experience I gained from it. You know, I learned, um, obviously, you know, a lot of, a lot of little, you know, tricks and little stuff I, I picked up from the fight, but it was, uh, the biggest thing I would say was experience from being in there with someone like that. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Antonio. And that will conclude our media session for today. I'm going to send it back up to Brian Custer for some final thoughts. Okay, thanks, Mitch, thank you very much. Again, listen, this is the main event that comes your way uh, Saturday, April 8th on Showtime Championship Boxing. Uh, we're going to do it from the Dignity Health uh, Sports Park in Carson, California. The main event, Sebastian Fundor, unbeaten, uh, taking on Brian Mendoza. Uh, again, this fight is brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions, being promoted by TGB Promotions and Samson Boxing. You can get your tickets at AXS.com, AXS.com. Guys, we're going to wrap it up with this. Uh, Brian, I always like to ask this question for uh, all of those people who will turn into Showtime Championship Boxing. And for those people who will come out and spend their hard-earned money there in Carson, California, to come watch you fight, what can you guarantee they're going to get when you step into the ring with Sebastian Fundora on April 8th? Um, I can guarantee another explosive upset, just like the last one. You know, people, uh, they were laughing and doubting and everything just like then. And then all I went in there and proved it, and I plan to do the exact same thing April 8th. So I guarantee you, you should get your tickets. Love it. Sebastian Fundora. Same question to you, to those people who love to come out to Carson, California. They love to watch you fight. What can you guarantee they're going to get when you step in the ring with Brian Mendoza? Another show, another show, another exciting show. You know, got two hard hitters fighting uh, uh, on the main event. And then we got my sister fighting another Carson show early enough. And you'll see my sister fight too. So <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It should be one heck of a fight. Again, it goes down April 8th on Showtime Championship Boxing. Brian Mendoza, Sebastian Fundora. Guys, uh, best of luck to you. Uh, stay healthy throughout here at camp. And can't wait to see you guys in a couple of weeks on Showtime. I appreciate your time. Looking like forward to it, man. Absolutely. And thank you, members of the media, for tuning in. I'm Brian Cust.